Oh, peeps. Welcome to the Culture and People cast. Today we have Jesse Jacobs, and I'm super excited. Jesse, in a few sentences, will you tell us who you are and what you do? Yes. Okay. Uh, I'm Jesse Jacob. I uh, like to call myself an, an experiential designer, a facilitator, uh, a person that likes to bring humans together and connect uh, with a purpose uh, or with a passion for culture and innovation. How's that? <laughs> That is so good. That is so good. I love it. And you are, you are a powerful connector of people and ideas. And it's one of the things I love most about you. So that's what I like most, but what do you love most about this work? You've been working in the culture and people space. You and I jam together in culture first. We do a lot of different things. What is your favorite thing about this work? Yeah, so uh, my I really just like bringing humans together to have meaningful interactions and to connect with one another and to reflect. I think part of my my purpose, so what I was explaining, is that uh, part of my purpose is to, it sounds fluffy, but to help people grow in their own awareness so they can expand their capacity to love and be loved. And I do that through uh, connecting in meaningful ways. And so I like to host events. I like to facilitate effective meetings that run well, rather than just like everyone's super bored. Uh, so yes, I like to, I'm running a book club with my friend who just wrote uh, a book called The Almanac of Naval Ravikant. And so anyone who's read the book, we're doing a, a little discussion afterwards about how they apply the tools and the concepts to their life. And so I really like thinking through the experience of the events, right? And then I'm running a financial technology conference called VSUM where I'm like this community leader and I'm thinking about um, how do all these people come and like actually connect with one another rather than just like coming and joining a Zoom session that's like for two hours and they're all bored and they wanna call in and get a recording later. So I like uh, doing that. And then the culture first stuff obviously is like, that's so up my alley, I love, bringing people leaders together, people who want to impact the workplace and impact our world um, together to kind of learn from each other. It's kind of a, I think of it as like a brain trust mastermind group or peer group to kind of help improve our organizations. Yes. And it's free. So for those of you who don't, do not know about Culture First, let me take a, my, a minute to plug it. There's a company called Culture Amp who has started this and they have local chapters. So I'm a co-lead for Milwaukee and you are the lead for Kansas City. And these are groups and they make it whatever they want, but you know, they meet monthly, they meet a couple times a month. They're providing meaningful community connections, right? So I can see why that's right up your alley. Yes. As for me, when I think about you, I mean, I have... Um, led event planners before, right? And that is not what you are. And that is no degradation to their world. You are somebody who definitely brings this knowledge of humans and connection and thoughtfully and strategically, I think, thinking through. So you're not just running a book club in your neighborhood. This is a scaled <laughs> event where it is a targeted impact that you are trying to make. You are thinking through that financial conference and really thinking about who are we serving, right? That's human-centered design. Totally. Right? Like, what do we really need to give them to provide them with a meaningful experience? Yes, totally. Yeah, I get you. I see you. I'm, I'm like, let's take an end to all the shitty meetings and all the shitty events. Like, let's mm. let's let's amp this up. Let's bring the humanity back, people. I will be the one outside with a sign that says, "No more shitty events." I yes. am with you. Yes. I'm with you. Okay, so let, that that is like you and what you love about this work. I want to ask for some thought leadership because I am hearing from a lot of leaders that engaging their employees is a challenge. Mm -hmm. We could say now more than ever. I don't even know if that's true, but what are your thoughts? Yeah. Uh, well, it's a, it's a ginormous problem. I mean, we've seen, we've all seen the Gallup report at this point, right? At least for us, the people in this industry. Uh, and for me, I think it goes back to how are we running our meetings? How are we bringing people together? Are we being thoughtful about the employee experience? Are we being conscientious of what it's like to be them? It's not about the, um, like I have a friend who was like, oh, my job's great until I interact with the organization. I was like, oh, that's a ginormous problem. Uh, and so let's like, let's have a conversation about how we're bringing the team together and like what kinds of, how are we meaningfully connecting with one another? Like I'm hearing a lot of stuff about, um, disengagement now that our uh, meetings are online, there's no water cooler talk. And so we have to be intentional about that little bit of like warm up time too. And not just like warm up time where we talk about sports for 15 minutes, but like actual warm up time where it's like, how are you doing today? Like, let's check in. Like, what's your energy level? Mm. Um, what's something that's bringing you joy recently? Just like little small things like that go a ginormous way in terms of connecting. Yeah. Uh, so that's where my brain goes in terms of 
engagement, um, checking, like asking people how they are connecting with humans. Yeah. Yeah. And I think people hear us talk about these things and think like, oh, listen to those like soft hearted people when they really don't understand how, what strategic powerhouses we are. Right. Like I know you personally, you and I have in common like innovative workplaces. Right. And I kind of attack it from like, what does the entrepreneur need to do to sort of pull up and like own their strength a little bit more? And what does the system need to do? But I know you think about that too, because there's an obligation. This is like a strategic business imperative to provide an environment where innovation, where, um, humanity can thrive because without those things, you're not going to get innovation. You're probably not even according to the Gallup data going to even get basic good work. Yeah. Even just thinking about the, like all companies are wanting to, are wondering like, how do we stay relevant? How do we stay at the top of our industry? How do we grow? Everyone's asking themselves that. And to do that, in order to do that, you need to be innovative and like being innovative sounds great, but like you have to have a culture and a team mm-hmm. dynamic that can, and an environment that actually supports innovation. So like, it's great to say, we, we want to learn, we want to grow, but like, are you actually learning and growing? And like, what are the specific habits and norms and processes that you've put in place to be able to have your team reflect and to actually grow? Mm, because I promise you, if you are out there having 10 hours of meetings, Zoom meetings a day, you oh. are not being innovative. No. Right. And I promise you, if you are asking your people to be innovative and they require 18 signatures to get something done, that is not innovative, right? So I define culture as the outcome of our daily habits and behaviors. Mm, so if you yeah. want an innovative culture, then you have to set up processes, agreements, and behaviors that are going to get you that. If you want a high-performing culture, then you have to think about whatever you're defining, right? Whatever that culture, that mission, that purpose is, those values, you've got to bring that to life. And you've got to make sure that what you're saying, because here's a big disconnect. I don't know if you've seen this in organizations. They'll say we want, let's just go with innovative for a second. We want to be really innovative, but let's go back to that person who said, I like my job until I have to talk to the organization. Right. Yeah. They're actually very bureaucratic. Oh yeah. That gap in the constant messages they're hearing from the leader being this, but this is what they're feeling, yeah. right? It could be a no asshole policy when they look around and it hasn't been clearly defined. So they think they're surrounded by him. Whatever that gap is, is huge. And it erodes trust and it erodes performance. Yeah. And everyone's worried about losing their jobs and they like their lack of confidence. Like if I actually put out ideas, are, they, are people going to hear me? Are they going to listen? Mm-hmm. Or if I if I really put my effort into this, is it actually going to go through? Or are they going to kind of crush my dreams here? It's uh, our lack of confidence is down in the workplace and it's no wonder why. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Okay. So I feel like I'm soapboxing. So I'm going to step down and I'm going to ask you for tactical advice. Cause I could like, we're going to go to church and just preach for a little I bit, but that. let's get really tactical. So there's a, there's a listener on this, on here, there's a watcher viewing us on LinkedIn or YouTube. And they're saying like, all right, you got me, Jesse, you've convinced me. I want to shift our behaviors. I want to move towards better people practices. I want to evolve our culture. What could yeah. somebody start doing tomorrow? Yeah. Well, so I will plug my own things here. I'm running a workshop uh, called how to create, it's called creating an innovative team culture. And so it's in partnership with this, these culture first chapters, but I'm also doing them within organizations, not just for our chapters. Uh, And that's just where I talk about here are the five values of an innovative team culture. So they're like psychological safety, uh, essentialism, which uh, sounds like a weird one, but it's really Mm -hmm. just like efficiency, prioritization, uh, growth, learning, self-awareness, and fun. So those are like the five buckets. And then I talk about the specific habits and tools of each of those um, values. And so uh, for instance, like in my session, we do this thing called a pre-mortem. So we've all heard of a post-mortem or an after action review where we go through and we say, okay, here's what we did after the, like, here's, let's reflect on how that event learned, worked. What did we learn? How did it go? What can we do better to improve? The pre-mortem happens before you start a project or an initiative. So you're so you're asking yourself, okay, so like how will we know we will have failed and when will we know those things? So what are the biggest risks to our project? And like, how do we mitigate those risks? And so I ran this the other day and someone was like, I realized that my plan B is should actually be my plan A. And I was like, that's awesome. <laughs> like, oh, you save them so much trouble and heartache and money and time and yes. So that's like a, that's a perfect example of a tool that you could use. Um, 
And, and, and we don't have to overcomplicate this. Like we're talking about maybe like for a big project, like at least an hour, right? At least spend, yeah. start somewhere that says like, let's just dream together. And let's also think about like dreaming of, or, you know, I guess, what's the word I'm looking for? Uh, foretelling, foreshadowing the yeah. potential fear and the failure that we could have. Because totally. if we don't talk about that, you know, that's in the back of people's Everyone's head. thinking it, everyone's yeah. thinking it. So by us voicing our concerns, we're actually building trust and psychological safety with one another. And we're actually showing that we're committed to continuous growth and improvement by doing a simple exercise like that. It's, yes. it's a win-win. Oh, I love it. That is amazing advice. So we'll have two more quick questions here, Jesse. Um, the first one is other top leaders like yourself who are doing really good work in the ring. Either we want to shout them out or they might even potentially be a guest on the show. Yeah. So, well, obviously I would do a lot of work with Diana Kanders, the innovation consultant. Uh, we like to call ourselves the innovation Queens. So, <laughs> uh, okay. uh, but I immediately thought, um, Gary, Ware. I freaking love that dude. He's doing a lot of great things and, uh, a lot of the tools and exercises that he's using to talk about purposeful play have really inspired me. And like thinking about, uh, I've been bold and used the word adult recess now because of him. Mm -hmm. So like I had a team that was talking about, uh, we, we get together for this happy hour and we play games. And I'm like, that is the biggest waste of time ever. Like we could play real games where we actually interact and we learn from one another, but like actually playing video games is a ginormous waste of time. So Gary is like totally blown my mind with the whole, like the power of play thing in the workplace. So, so you're converted. You don't think that's yeah. a waste of time anymore. Uh, yeah. And I love like the stuff that Shannon Hughes is doing. They also run a, uh, a workshop through culture amp too called fear and play. And a lot of the stuff that she's doing, uh, really inspires me too. Oh, that's so good. Um, so, and I know we had the leaders at Crema doing an incredible job of building innovative yes. team culture too, right? Yes. So they're, oh my gosh, Crema is like, well, they're the, the crema of the crop. They're the cream of the crop in Kansas City. Uh, they're a dev shop and they, um, they're teaching a lot of clients how to actually run design sprints and like how to actually adopt that agile methodology into their workplaces. And so they're doing a really great job of like internally with their organization of like doing a feelings wheel check-in at the beginning. They do regular 15-5 pulse surveys. Um, so I really admire the leaders over there and just like their humility and uh, their ability to learn and grow and be able to share that with others. I think it's really remarkable. That's so great. Thank you. And then uh, Sonia Montag McKay, correct? Yes, Sonia. Okay. Oh, she's so great. She, I'm learning so much from her. She's like really into the mindfulness meditation, a lot of stuff about breath work that I find fascinating. I love stuff like that about how we how we balance our HRV and our autonomic nervous system and things like that. I mean, when we're constantly triggered uh, throughout the workplace, we're not going to do high quality work when we're constantly activated. So uh, I'm just learning a ton from her about her, the, the work that she's doing and the, and also the like experience that she's had too. So. Yeah. So that's so great. Where do you connect most with her on LinkedIn or. Yeah. So she's okay. a lead for the um, culture first chapter in goodness. I believe it's London, but she's living in Scotland. <laughs> so, okay. Yes. I will connect with her because I was thinking I do my insight timer. By the way, I'm on day 23 of daily, at least 10 minutes of meditation every morning and 30 minutes of reading day 23. So are you doing the morning mindfulness challenge? I am. I'm, yes. I'm four days behind though. So I love it. I, I love insight timer. Yes, yes, me too. Me too. Okay. So we will link to all of those things. And uh, last question, favorite resources that advance your thinking related to people or culture. Yeah. So, um, let's see. Well, all of the, all these chapters at culture first, so keep promoting it no. are doing amazing things. Uh, and so I just continue to show up for those events and learn from other people. Um, let's see a book that I've really gotten, uh, well, a book in the past that I love is creativity Inc. I don't know if you've read that yeah. book. But, uh, so good. So good. Uh, and I've been listening, listening to this new podcast called, well, new to me, it's called yeah. great new work. Um, and so that's a really good one. It, they talk all about what we've been talking about, red tape, bureaucracy, yes. things like that. Uh, so that's another, another good resource. 
And then I will plug, I know that you have some really great resources that you've been working on by yourself and with Diane Kander too. So we will link to that. Um, I know that those are not things that you have out on online readily available, but you are so generous so that if people listen to this and they want to DM you, um, I know you'll be very generous with those resources too. So if they want to ask me about how to run a pre-mortem, we have a worksheet, a a train the trainer type situation where they can learn how to actually facilitate that on their own or an after action review or things like that. So. Awesome. Okay. I will definitely note that down so people know to ask <laughs> for that. But cool. listen, Jesse, this has been a delight. You are one of my new favorite people. We have a lot in common, but also I just think you have such a generous spirit in the way that you share your expertise, right? That's really what you have is an expertise, but you share it in such a humble and meaningful way. So people can, uh, you know, that's palatable when it's like Thank that. You, Anna. I appreciate you. So thanks for all you do for culture and people and for being a guest today. Oh, thank you. Of course. Peace and progress, guys.